Uh, I would like to thank Dean Shaw for her support. Uh, she's the Dean of our college. Uh, Baylin, would you raise your hand so that we can be recognized? And as you can see from the paper in your hand, we have an eclectic program. So we have a series of performers. Uh, this is a multifaceted problem. It probably requires a multifaceted solution. Research will play a role, policy will play a role, politics will play a role, and art will uh, play a role. We are very fortunate to have as our first speaker, uh, Dr. David Snow. He's a professor at UC Irvine. Um, you know, uh, your credentials are far less important than the quality of your work. In 20 minutes, I'm sure we will all know uh, every, uh, the full depth of the work of Dr. Smith. So please come to the, come to the podium. Thank you, John. And uh, we thank you all for coming and uh, being part of the discussion and hopefully part of the solution. Uh, to a problem that's really been festering in this country uh, since the 1980s. There have been different waves of homelessness historically, uh, but this current wave really began uh, in the 1980s. I think you recall maybe around 82 when unemployment was over 10%, and uh, rather than decreasing since then, it's escalated. Uh, and what I want to do is present some findings from research here in Orange County uh, of a study uh, that uh, we were commissioned to do by United Way Jamboree Housing, which is a large developer of low-income housing, and UCI, and that's where I teach, and my colleague, uh, Dr. Goldberg, and a couple of graduate students. And so we did this study on how much does it cost to be homeless in Orange County. And the real question is, is it more or less costly than housing people? And that's the question we tried to answer, but in the process, we gathered a lot of data on homelessness. I just told you about the primary objectives. I, a bit about uh, the research design. And not to bore you with this, but it's so important. Uh, at present, I'm on the Newport Beach uh, Council Task Force for Homelessness. And I mention that in relation to the importance of research. Because prior, at the beginning of every meeting, this is a, based on an act called the Brown Act, which uh, was instituted back in the 1950s in California. You have this public comment section. So really before you get into anything, people come up, and express their concerns and complaints. And every time I walk out of there, I'm depressed. I'm depressed not only because of the misinformation, but the lack of compassion uh, from fellow citizens. And one way to combat, combat that is with research. I don't know where they get most of their information. I'm sure it's just searching online for somebody like Dr. Drew. But, uh, what we try to do is get some substantial information. And with cost, we, we gather information from 34 municipalities in the county, uh, the hospitals with ERs, which are about 20 some, a uh, sample of non governmental agencies, the county. And we, when we looked at all of that, that would give us uh, the expenditures. Then, based on interviews, was over 250 homeless, and these were lengthy interviews throughout the county at the former uh, riverbed encampment, at the uh, Santa Ana Courthouse, at various shelters, uh, all, all, at various parks around the county. And based on these interviews, we were able to figure out uh, for example, we'd ask somebody, uh, within the past six months, how many times have you gone to an ER? How many times have you gone to a hospital? How many times have you gone to a shelter? How many times have you gone to some food bank? And so on. So if homeless person Joe says, I've been in an ER six times uh, during the last, uh, uh, or 12 times the last six months, and we know what the average cost of an ER, we, will, we know how much Joe costs 
uh, for his medical issues and from ER to the hospital and so on. So this is how we got our uh, information. What I want to jump to are some of the demographic characteristics of the homeless. First one, 90% per, 90 of those we interviewed were born in the U.S. This often is believed to stereotype that these are folks who have recently come across the border. That's not the case at all. Uh, not, actually, the proportion of homeless in Orange County that were U.S. born is larger than the portion of domiciled citizens in Orange County that are U.S. born. How long have they lived in Orange County? In our research, we found that 68% have lived here 10 years or longer. Over here, the, how many of you heard of the recent point in time count? Well, some of you have. Okay, great. Well, anyway, uh, without going into that, uh, some of their data uh, showed, and this is only for uh, people who are unsheltered, but 92%, uh, uh, not that they've been in Orange County, but Orange County's been their primary residence. 73% uh, their last permanent address was Orange County. Uh, the point here is that the homeless in Orange County are our citizens. Uh, they're not coming here from Nebraska or Oklahoma uh, or Ohio uh, to get close to the beach and enjoy uh, the weather. Uh, as the case with research every place, you still, the majority is still male. But over the years, increasing the proportion of females. 12%, we found veterans, the point in time, uh, only 5%. There's some reasons for that that I don't want to get into uh, at this point. Whites are plurality. That means more than any other uh, racial ethnic group. Uh, we found 30% Latino, uh, point in time, 36% uh, Latino. That makes sense. Orange County is uh, around 36% of teens. Uh, black African American, we found 15% uh, point time, 11%. Only 2% of Orange County is black or African American. What you find here is what you find in virtually every community of any size in the United States. African Americans are overrepresented among the homeless in relation to their proportion of the population. Uh, some other things, 67% live alone. That's a, a very significant number because there are all sorts of not very positive consequences of living alone. Uh, only 6% are married, 7% uh, live with children. I call those social capital deficits. Uh, social capital is another fancy social science term for social networks, for social connections. They're deficits because these figures are different than the most downside people. The point is, most of the homeless don't have anybody to fall back on or to put their head on their shoulder uh, when they're having difficult times. Nearly 20% have not completed high school uh, in Orange County. I think that percentage is around 6%. Nationally, a little over 5%. And if you look at when they last worked, here's another deficit, uh, which puts homeless at disadvantage. It's what economists call human capital. Education helps constitute human capital as it does uh, one's work experience. So there's a deficit there as well. And the last one I want to go to is health. Uh, we use the same question that National Health Surveys use. And 45% indicated of those we interviewed they were in fair or poor health. Now contrast this to national findings. On uh, national findings, you only get about 9% of Americans on this question indicate that they're for fair to poor health. And even among Americans living in poverty, only about 22%, but here, 45%. And then when you add in the high incidence of 
depression, you also have health deficits. Causes of homelessness. Again, this is important because what you hear, what I hear from folks in Newport Beach, three things. Drugs, alcohol, and mental illness. And of course those are factors, but they're not the primary factors. All of you play the game of musical chairs. So I think one way, a good way to think about the game of uh, uh, the causes of homelessness is to think about musical chairs. Think of the houses as the structural conditions, or the chairs, excuse me, as the houses. What causes the houses to either be in short supply or removed? The answer to that is a structural factor. Individuals have nothing to do with it. We're talking about housing markets. And then ask yourself, when a chair is removed, when a housing is removed, who's left standing? And when you can answer those two questions, then you understand the causes of homelessness. I say in an evidence-based world, for obvious reasons, because uh, we live in a time where opinion's been valorized and uh, evidence uh, is increasingly uh, become less important other than uh, these bastions of education like colleges and universities. So, in terms of who's vulnerable left standing, we're looking by a graphic factor. So of the 250 plus homeless we interviewed and asking them about why they were homeless, and they could give multiple reasons, 40% said the issue of sustainable wages, finding or retaining jobs that provide uh, sustainable wages. The other is 36% finding or retaining affordable housing, uh, and into that comes eviction as well. Those are structural factors. Then here are the biographic vulnerabilities. Family issues. Uh, we had just heard uh, from Megan about uh, abuse. Uh, Drugs and alcohol, mental illness, physical health, and, re and release from prison and jail. I just, a structural factor. Uh, I think it was Lee who mentioned, mentioned the importance of uh, housing. What this graph shows is between 2000 and 2014 in Orange County, uh, the increase in median rent versus what was going on with income. And what you find over here in terms of the green line, uh, median rent over that 14-year period increased uh, close to $3,700. Uh, where median income, renter income that is, declined by $5,000. It's in this gap where homelessness grows. Somebody said at the uh, Newport Beach uh, task force meeting, uh, some citizen, I don't know why they were referring to Seattle, but said uh, they have read that 80% uh, of the homeless uh, in Seattle are drug addicts. So I got online, and of course, you can find all sorts of things, but found some research by economists. And what it shows in Seattle is this very thing, that the cost the increase in the cost of rent over time, homelessness grows with that, a linear relationship. And that's true in Orange County, that's true in San Francisco, it's true in Seattle. It's likely to be true wherever you look. Another thing we did is to, separately for women and men, Look at all the causes and how they cluster together and which ones were dominant. So over here, this big, the big uh, red one, uh, for women, it, the dominant factor for 74% is lack of affordable housing and jobs. You can see that with the line uh, all the way up to about 50% 50, uh, 50 there, and then you throw in uh, job loss and wages, and that grows to 74. It doesn't say that other factors aren't relevant, like mental health, uh, drugs, domestic violence, but 
for this cluster, the dominant factor is the intersection of income and housing costs. Then there's another sector here, uh, domestic violence. Look at this. Look at the orange line all the way to 100%. So for at least 21% of the women on the street in Orange County, you can throw everything else out but domestic violence. So when people say most homeless are homeless by choice, how could that be the case if you're a victim of domestic violence? And finally, uh, other factors that uh, drugs and alcohol do enter in, but in the case of women, it's the dominant factor for only 5%. It's not to say that drugs and alcohol may not come up in these other clusters, but they're not the dominant factor. And for men, it's pretty much similar, a, a little smaller percentage in terms of affordable housing and income. 22% uh, a cluster of family issues, drugs and health, and another cluster, 21% of re-entry, that is released from jail, prison, drugs and health. The important point is somebody, oh, uh, the, the provost, uh, Provost Oliver said multiple causes. Well, what this showed are how these different factors intersect. And so folks that say, oh, it's all drugs, it's all mental illness, it's not. It's the intersection of a number of factors. But the fact of the matter is we would not have the problem and the persistence of homelessness that we do in this country if it was not for the disjunction between the cost of housing and income. Just a couple other things that make people vulnerable. 32% of those we interviewed, this includes men and women, experienced sexual or physical abuse as a child. One third. And we know how traumatizing that can be. 42% had a parent or other adult household member with drugs or alcohol problem. 14% had a parent or a, a family member who would spend at least a night on the street. 28% spent time living with non-parental adults, foster parents, or an orphanage. And 6% in a juvenile correction. All of these things when they intersect by themselves or when they intersect, increase the vulnerability of being left standing when housing is removed or unavailable. Quickly, on the cost of homelessness in Orange County, and adding everything together, 300 million, uh, this was for a few years ago, it would be more today because it's the point in time when Estimate is right, there's about a 43% increase in the number of homeless in Orange County from uh, 2017 to 2019. The estimate today is just shy of 7,600 uh, In terms of where the big cluster of the cost, health care is, is the largest one, followed by housing and then law enforcement. And probably our estimate of law enforcement is uh, really quite conservative. But here's what I want to get at. The chronic and non-chronic homeless. The chronic homeless person is the person who's been on the street for a year or more and has usually multiple disabilities. You know what it costs that person in Orange County? $100,000 a year. That's the cost. For the non-chronic, $4,200. There's this housing first model that says if we put people in housing, whatever their conditions, the costs are going to go down. Hospital visits are going to go down, counter use law enforcement time on the streets. That's the hypothesis, what the data shows. Well, for the non-chronic, it moves from 42,000 a year to 9,000 a year when you put them in the appropriate housing. A huge saving. For the chronic, it moves from 100,000 to 51,000. It's cut in half. So you have a 50% for the chronic lowering of cost. But we also found 
about 80% fewer ambulance rides, fewer tickets from the police, fewer arrests. Declined 100%. Just one other thing. For the upper decile, the upper 10% of chronic homeless, $439,000 a year for that person. Put them in housing, $55,000 a year. So, just taking that, what are the major takeaways from my few comments and some of the data? you got to think of homelessness as a situation in which some people find themselves rather than as a characteristic of persons. It's a social condition rather than a social type. The primary cause for both men and women is the gap between the cost of rental housing and the availability of living wages to access that housing. So homeless are people for whom there's no available or accessible housing slots. We know from the cost study that the cost of homelessness decreases markedly with the provision of housing. And that's true for whether it's chronic homeless or non-chronic homeless. And we also know that the most, many of the so-called most troublesome issues associated with homelessness, such as eliminating in public, sleeping in public, hanging out in public, all of that disappears when you're housed. So the question I want you to take with you and to think about is why not housing now? Why put it off? And what are the obstacles that we encounter, not only in the county, but from each of our 34 municipalities that make it difficult to compensate gold? Thank you. We have about five or ten minutes if anyone has questions for Dr. When you say the cost per, per person, is that the cost for the actual person or the cost for the municipality? Pardon? Yeah. When, when you say the cost per person? Decline. Uh, per. No, the cost of like living. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, is that for the person, the actual person, or for the municipality or the... That's, the, that's across the county, the average cost. So for the chronic homeless of 105000 that's what it... When we add up all the costs, That's what it yeah, so, you know, again, if you were homeless and I was interviewing you, you'd give me this information. How many times over the past uh, 30 days or six months did you do this? Did you go there? And I know what the average cost of each of those, figured it out. I mean, I saw, interviewed a fellow at Newport Beach, a transit station. He had been homeless or in Orange County for 17 years. During the past six months, he had had 12 emergency room transports, 12 emergency room visits, five hospitalizations, you name the disabilities, he had it. Uh, and the other thing is that we found is that the average stay in the hospital for a homeless person is around 10 nights. For most of us, it's around three nights. And you can see how the, the medical costs escalate. Yes. Yes, sir. <clears throat> the incarceral state affects homelessness? The incarceral state. So you, you talk about the jail and prison system. Sure. Uh, in terms of, uh, well, first of all, what are the things that most homeless folks get arrested for? They're not what the, what the FBI calls the so-called index crime, that is, crimes of violence, murder, rape. Uh, assault, armed robbery, they're misdemeanors. Uh, and many of them, the majority for violations of city ordinances, sleeping in public places, loitering in public places, uh, drink, drinking in public places, particularly where there's an uh, open container law. Uh, you know, just, just hanging out. Uh, so homeless will get ticketed for that. What happens? They go to homeless court, the county courthouse in St. Anna, and they're given a fine. Uh, if they don't pay the fine, they're going to 
gets kicked out and put in jail. <coughs> but they don't have the money to pay the fines. So it's circular. All that adds to cost, but that's part of the parking system. You, you go deeper into it in terms of prison and release from that early release. Uh, I think they've changed it, but it used to be like early release at 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, you know, who's waiting? What do you do? Where are your connections? Uh, as I go back, many of these folks have limited social capital, so there's nobody to lean on. If my son uh, was arrested for something, say uh, DUI, uh, you know, if he was released at 2 in the morning, I'd be there to pick him up. I'd take him home. We'd have a very long discussion. Uh, <laughs> but most, many folks, and many of those who are homeless, don't have that. That uh, shoulder to fall back. We're just probably counting on the state to buy housing for that? Well, the, well, that's part of the issue that we're dealing with. And that's part of the housing first issue. Here it's to it's to provide housing and to get our communities and neighborhoods to get involved in that. And United Way uh, is part of this program uh, to end homelessness. Uh, and it's brought together uh, different sections of the community, uh, faith faith section, nonprofit, uh, business section, and so on. Uh, and trying to find I think. The overall estimate was initially we needed like 2,700 units of permanent supportive housing for, to try to remove most of the chronic illness. Uh, it's one thing to know that. It's another thing to get communities to agree to have, to convert apartments into that kind of housing or to build new housing. And what you get is the kind of thing that I've been hearing the last several months in Newport Beach. No, it's the NIMBY for that. Not my backyard. I think we have time for one more question. Uh, right there. So, um, with Housing First as the primary or, or the best source for helping to resolve homelessness, do you have any input as to why um, the municipalities or the county is more focused on a shelter first? Program. Very good question. Uh, the the shelter the shelter that you need, so to say, is getting people off the streets. I mean, look at let's be honest, and uh, most people uh, are not concerned. When they're concerned about the homeless, it's not because of compassion. Mm -hmm. It's because they're visual, auditory. Uh, kind of instructions to the community. For most people, if you can get them out of sight, it's all right. So get them off the street in the shelters. The problem with shelters, shelters are not a solution. The shelter is not permanent housing. Most shelters, you're back on the street the next day. Uh, permanent housing, not just permanent supportive housing, there are other kinds of housing as well. But homeless would have uh, their own bathroom, bedroom, maybe a little kitchenette. Uh, that's totally different than a shelter. Shelterization is not a solution Thank you. to homelessness. It's a stopgap, it's a band. Can I have one question? Please. What's your take on what's going on at San Clemente? <laughs> you, you could ask that to uh, the Brook. Well, Brooke will have a lot to say about <laughs> all of those things, too. Uh, well, I want the straight stuff. There are a lot of people that are big fans of Brooke, but she knows well there are a lot of people that aren't. <laughs> uh, you know, people ask, where do these, where do these, you know, they're asked the police, why can't you just pick them up and take them and dump someplace? Yeah. Or arrest them for, well, Brooke will tell you why you can't hear laws about that. Uh, but boy, they don't like to hear about those laws. Uh, and so just, that doesn't answer your question. No, not really. But uh, it, we've been observing it that uh, housing is a human right, OC, sure. very closely. And, and uh, 
we haven't seen anything like this uh, since we founded uh, HHRO. Yeah, look, part of the response you get, uh, and that I hear too, is that people say, well, what about my human rights? My human rights not to be accosted. Uh, my human rights not to, uh, you know, somebody says, how dare somebody have a tent at the Newport Beach Transit Center with an ocean view? Uh, so you, you, it, it's part of the NIMBY phenomenon and that kind of resistance, and that's part of what we all have to combat. And one of the things that you can all do, whatever you community you live in, in Orange County, whatever municipality, when they're the council meeting and you're discussing an issue like homelessness, show up and be a counter voice because you know the voices will be there to try to shout down doing anything about it that's the least bit compassionate and humane. And the only alternative to that is to get people from the community with a more compassionate, humane voice to come in and also command the microphone. All right. All right. Great. Thank you very much for having the county's leading research around this issue really has moved the discussion forward. Uh